So Girl on the Train was directed by Tate Taylor and stars Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt rides a train to and from New York every single day, sitting in the same car, same seat, looking out the same window, seeing the same people pass by every single day. Emily Blunt plays Rachel. Rachel is alcoholic, can't have kids, divorced, and pretty much in a severely depressive state. She's begun to live vicariously through these people that she sees. She's given them names, she's given them backstories. Emily Blunt's life has just not gone in a very good direction, so she needs to escape, and this train is part of her escape. That's about as, as exciting as it gets. The plot of this movie, according to the trailer, this woman rides a train every day, sees something bad happen to a woman in a tunnel. Might be an abduction, might be a murder, we're not really sure. But Emily Blunt's trying to find out what happened to this woman. The trailer trailer makes it look like a nail-biting, white-knuckled thriller of a movie, but it's none of those things. Everything I'm going to say from this point forward takes nothing away from Emily Blunt. She did an amazing job in the movie, her acting was spot on, and she was great, so nothing against Emily Blunt. I've never read the book, but I'm pretty sure the book has to be better than the movie. This was the slowest movie I think I've seen since Eyes Wide Shut. It was really... <sighs> The movie suffers a lot from just a pace that drags to a point that is difficult to comprehend. And I understand that they're trying to peel back layers and give you pieces, And but the thing is, is that if you're going to build that slowly, the reveal better be pretty freaking amazing and it just wasn't there. As the layers of the story start getting peeled back, you really care less and less about the characters. Except Rachel, except Emily Blunt care about her. But pretty much everybody else is just in this woven weird web of love and lies and it just gets very monotonous and kind of boring. Now maybe this is because I've seen Emily Blunt in so many strong roles. I've seen the kind of work that she's done. Not digging too deep, but I had a little bit of a problem with how the women were portrayed in this movie. Almost every woman in this movie was given like a baseline of weak. And I mean weak as in they can easily be controlled and easily be manipulated. And I just kind of found that as little... Really? Between the characters and the story and the way everything is woven together and this person seeing that person and having an affair with this person but that happened to this person, there's so much going on that you, it starts getting confusing. Maybe it's just me. I found it kind of confusing. You'll get these little nuggets throughout the movie that make you feel sympathetic for one character at one moment, but that's the only time. At the end of the day, at the end of the film, I had kind of a, huh. Okay, that's over, kind of feeling. If you scrape away all the molasses on top of this movie, I really feel, you could have just called it manipulative men, exposition, narrative, the movie. I like to try to keep my reviews at the surface level. Was it entertaining? Was it fun? But I'm gonna go a little bit into some of the ways that this movie was shot. Because if things like this stand out to me, I know they're gonna stand out to you. Whether it was an artistic choice or a blocking choice, the director, Tate, really liked extreme close-up. He wanted you to be in the mind of his characters so you know what they were thinking. I never felt claustrophobia just because of close-ups, and that's what this movie made me feel. I know I mentioned a few times on how slow this movie was. Let me put it into context. After the first half hour of the movie, I thought, dang, okay, I hope this kicks in. Let me look at my watch. 15 minutes had gone by. I literally, I think it was an hour and 45 minutes, maybe two hour movie. It felt like a three hour movie. It was that slow. The main situation that you saw in the trailer that you're waiting for, that you can't wait to find out when this movie's gonna kick into high gear, doesn't happen till like an hour plus into the movie. And that's an hour plus of exposition, narrative, and backstory that you really don't care that much about. When the mystery of what happened to the girl in the tunnel is solved, you just kind of go, uh. Well, that's not nearly as interesting as I thought. And I get that the director wanted to have these reveals at the end of the movie that were supposed to surprise you and supposed to make you <gasps> But there was literally maybe one you went, oh, okay, but you've seen it in 10 other movies. So these are really the main points I can throw at you from Girl on the Train. Quasi-interesting plot, really slow story and pacing, good acting by Emily Blunt, and an ending that leaves you feeling melancholy and bored. For the moment, my rating system is pretty much specific to each movie. So for this movie, unfortunately, I'm going to give it a slowest train wreck ever. It's a boring train wreck of a film that you really don't want to stay to watch the end for. I wanted to leave at least three times in the movie because I was so bored, but I already paid 18 bucks for the ticket. Seriously, check it out. Arclight Hollywood, 18 bucks. So, Girl on a Train, have you seen the movie? Did you read the book? Which one was better? Comment down here, let me know, subscribe if you can, share this video, that all helps. Thanks for watching Matt Erickson Reviews Girl on the Train. Until next time, bye-bye.